Hey guys, welcome to the Farming Pastor's Wife. Today, we are going to doctor up a jarred, <clears throat> a jarred spaghetti sauce. And we're going to make it taste like homemade. And it's going to be delicious. So stay tuned. Okay, so we all live busy lives and we all can't simmer a pot of spaghetti sauce all day long or maybe it's not summertime and we haven't canned our spaghetti sauce for the year. So sometimes, and it is totally okay, we rely on store-bought spaghetti sauce, but it didn't always have that good home cooked, simmered, all day flavor. But I'm going to show you how to doctor it up to get a little flavor in there and make it taste like you have slaved for days on this spaghetti sauce. So, and the reason I'm having to do these shortcut meals is because I just found out that the remodeler starts on Monday. Y'all, I haven't even began to take things out of my kitchen. I knew my cabinets were almost ready. In fact, stay tuned to the end of this video, and I'll take you over there and show you some of my cabinets. I've had a video that I showed the cabinets made, um, but he has actually started staining them. So, um, I went over there yesterday and took a picture of the stain. Um, so, I go to the end of the video and you'll see the stain. Um, or almost the end, but anyway, so th the next few meals for a while are going to be quick, easy, not something I can't stand in the kitchen all day while the remodel's going on. I have to make things quick, easy, crock pot, just come in here and throw it together. So this is, these are great videos for working moms, for busy busy people um, who don't have the luxury of standing in their kitchen all day. Not that it's a luxury, but you know what I mean. So we're going to get started on this in just a little bit. I've got one ground beef. I thought of ground beef yesterday because I thought I was going to have this yesterday. Um, but Caroline and Jamie's coming, so I've laid out another pack of our home-raised beef. Um, but you just need a pound. Um, in my case, I'm using two pounds and I'm using two jars of spaghetti sauce. Um, so that's what we're doing tonight. So let's make homemade tasting spaghetti sauce. Okay, y'all, let's get this spaghetti sauce going. Um, I'm just going to open up my hamburger and we're going to put it over here in my frying pan. get this to cooking and once it starts I'm just going to go ahead and put the onions right in it in fact I'll actually go ahead and do that now this is one medium onion chopped up and the reason I'm going ahead and putting that in there to cook with the beef is just that's that much more flavor going in since this is a quick spaghetti sauce. We need to get as much flavor as we can in there fast. Okay y'all, my hamburger meat is about halfway done. I've done everything. Normally I don't do everything on high, but I have done it today because I'm, this is a fast supper. So I've got my pasta, salted, heavily salted pasta water over here going. And I'm going to add about a tablespoon of garlic. Now we're going to add some garlic powder later. <coughs> so don't overdo it at this point with the garlic. But I do let my meat get about halfway because you don't want to overcook the 
Now I'm going to let this keep going. Let me tell you, since this is a fast meal and you're wanting us some flavor, I let this get good and brown because the more brown bits and the, the crusty brown bits, now I mean you don't want to crust everything in here, but you know, if there's some brown bits in the bottom, that's flavor and that's what you need in a fast spaghetti sauce or a doctored up spaghetti sauce. Y'all, the kind of cooking I'm gonna do over the next few days is cooking anybody can do. Even Caroline, my daughter. Now she probably would tell you no. Now let me also talk to you a minute Hold on, I'm about to cough. Okay, let me talk to you a little bit about the grease. If yours is very greasy, you want to drain it. But if there's just a little bit, you know what I'm gonna say. That's flavor. But for the most part, hamburger grease, I mean, it solidifies and it is some nasty stuff as far as the way it clogs and everything. So for the most part, I like to drain my hamburger meat. Now, what I'm accustomed to doing, and I know once I go to a gas stove, I might not, I might be too scared to try it. Um, but a lot of times, I'll tilt my pan, let the grease run to one side, and dab out the grease with paper towels, which is what I'm gonna do now. Y'all have seen me do that before. Okay guys, I have soaked up most of the grease and now we're going to start flavoring it. I'm going to add some salt. Um, I think my pepper shaker is out. So we're going to add just a little bit of pepper. We are going to add in some um, Italian seasoning. Now. I'm just eyeballing this. I will try to write some sort of um, <clears throat> amounts in the um, description, but you can adjust. That's the great thing about this kind of cooking. You adjust. I'm going to add just a few basil because there's basil in that Italian seasoning, but I'm just going to add just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to add some more garlic, and we may add even more. Okay, now, I'm sorry I'm reaching in front of you guys. We're going to add just a splash or two of Worcestershire sauce. This is going to give it depth and flavor to help it feel like you've cooked it all day long. I'm going to give it a couple more splashes. And one more... One more thing before we add in the tomato sauces. Let me just give it a quick stir. Oh my goodness, like flavor and smell. I mean, I can just smell the flavor. Oh my goodness. And I like putting the seasoning in now. Um, because of the heat and, and, and it's not mixed in with the sauce and it's perfuming it a little bit. So I'm just going to add in um, a tablespoon of tomato paste. Here comes my Isaac in from working outside. And I may add some more tomato paste in just a little bit. I need something other than this masher. But I'm going to go ahead and put in my jars. i got two jars of spaghetti sauce. I'm going to add these in, grab a spoon, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, so let me tell you what I did. I put in each jar, after I poured it in here, I filled it up with about a fourth of a cup of water. I think this one's got a little more than a fourth of a cup, but it's okay. And that just gets out all that extra sauce that you're leaving in there. We're not wasting. And 
And you can actually save these jars if you had leftover um, spaghetti sauce to go in. So now we're going to give it a stir. And we've got our oven turned on like a low, almost low. And I may turn it up just a little bit. Now this is a taste and see. Once this heats up and gets warm, I may actually turn it up just a little bit. Once it gets warm, I'm going to taste and see, does it need more garlic? Does it need more Italian seasoning? Does it need more um, basil? And there's two more ingredients we're going to add at the end, and you need to taste to see if you have enough of that. And one is sugar. Now, I always add a touch of sugar to my spaghetti sauce. Let me, um, while that's getting warm. I think that is so important. Now, I like my spaghetti with just a hint of sweetness. But even if you don't like a sweet spaghetti sauce, adding just a little bit of sugar makes all the difference. I don't know what it does. I can't explain it. And I'm not talking about the acidity from tomatoes. That's not even what I'm talking about. It just does something special to your sauce. Now, I do add enough to give mine a hint of sweetness because I do like a slight, not overly sweet, but just a hint of sweetness to my spaghetti sauce. All right, guys, I'm also going to turn my oven on and get it ready for our garlic bread. Get my bread pan out. All right. So, the pasta water is still heating up. And I'm going to turn it up. And this is going to simmer and for just a few minutes. And while that's all happening, I'm going to make a salad. And then we'll come back. We're going to add a little. Let's go ahead and add the sugar now. Now, you can add as little as a teaspoon to as much as, well, whatever you want to add. Do you want me to measure? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, I'd say that was probably a tablespoon and a half. And I'm gonna let this cook for just a minute, or simmer for just a minute, and then I'm gonna grab a spoon and taste it. A clean spoon taste it and see if I need to add more. You always want to taste your food as you're cooking so you can add more salt, more pepper, more Italian seasoning, whatever the case may be. All right, so I'm gonna let that cook for just a minute. Simmer, I keep saying cook, but simmer for just a little bit. And I'm gonna clean up and make my salad. Okay, y'all, the salad is made and I've grabbed me a clean spoon and we're gonna give this spaghetti sauce a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Sauce is perfect. I think the sweetness is perfect. I'm gonna add maybe a, just a sprinkle more. I mean, a teaspoon maybe at that. I'm gonna stir that in and I'm gonna add one more ingredient. Y'all, every time I talk, I get myself to coughing. But don't judge me. If you have, if you have fresh Parmesan or the block of Parmesan, by all means, use that. But y'all, I'm trying to get things out of my cabinet. I'm trying to get things out of my refrigerator and not buy any more needless things. So this is just something I can store easily. And I know it's probably not the healthiest thing in the world for us. But I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese to the sauce, as well as on top of my spaghetti. But we're going to add some, but we're going to open it first. This happens to me every time. Every time. Okay. So we're going to add some, I'm going to turn this down just so you can see how much, because I really don't know how to put measurements in the description. I may just say, watch video. I'm saying probably a fourth of a cup to a third of a cup. <clears throat> I 
and that looks perfect. All right. So I've just got to go outside, find Brian and Isaac, find out how much longer. I'm actually going to turn my water down just a little bit. I'm going to turn my sauce off. It's ready, guys. That's it. It tastes absolutely like I have been slaving over this sauce all day long, but you saw it only took me a few minutes. <clears throat> all right, so let me go find out from the guys when they're going to be ready to eat, and I will meet you guys in the dining room when everybody's here and ready to sit down for supper. Okay, guys, when I came out to see how long <clears throat> the guys were going to be, I thought I'd just come out here and show you what they're doing. I told you we have been cutting hay for a while. <laughs> and so there was hay in the field. And we still have several more acres to cut. <clears throat> the hay bales were left in the field. And so um, they have been brought now to the house and here to our barn. And so what Isaac and Bryant are doing, they're each getting a hay bale from out here in the field and placing it in the barn. We had some equipment we had to move before we could put the hay in there. So um, I'm gonna turn the camera around and let you watch them get and load the hay. Here goes Isaac. Bryant is in the hay barn. We'll walk in there in just a minute so we can see. But here is where the hay has been stacked. That mobile home back there is where Bryant and I first started. <laughs> it's where we made our home to start with. So Isaac's going in. I think Bryant's rearranging a few in there. So he's waiting for Bryant to come out. And he'll go in and stack his bale. Um, we have all this up here as well. I load. I brought this load home last night. Um, I was actually loading hay in the dark. Um, I actually drove the tractor home. <laughs> but um, so there goes Brian. He's waving. So he's gonna grab a bale. We'll go check out the barn in just a second. <laughs> he thinks he's funny. All right, let's go in the barn. Hey guys, I just followed him in and this is what we have stacked so far. One, two, three, four bales high. And we're starting our second row. We'll stand somewhere out of the way, hopefully. This is Bryant's workshop too, so disregard the mess. So he turns it, lifts it, and places it. Sometimes he has to turn the knob up and adjust it and push it a little further. Do what? I think he said the barn will hold 250 rolls. I think is what he said. And as you see, there's a spear on the front and there's a spear on the back. When they were moving it from the field that was close to the house, when we weren't using the trailer, but they were, it was a field that was really close to the house, they would load one in the front and one in the back and bring two at a time.
this barn, this hay barn, will hold about 250 rolls. And if, for our work cows, we've just added some more brood cows. We will feed about 250 to 275 rolls just our cows. So. And we've got some that uh, that we sell occasionally that we store elsewhere. But you tell them, did you tell them we had this barn built by some Amish boys? No, I've, I've got a video somewhere, and it was a set of Amish who came and built this barn for us. Um, and he said that our cows will eat 250 rolls, but this is not the only cutting of hay that we will do. Um, there's another summer cutting, and then we will have a fall cutting. So we have several more hay seasons to go yet. Okay guys, so I have mentioned several times on my channel of making barbecue bread or buttering up some barbecue bread. And I always get a lot of questions like, what is barbecue bread? What is that? I'd love to see it. And it's not something I make homemade. It is store-bought. It is, the one I get is Wonder Classic Barbecue Bread. And this is what it looks like. And it's got sesame seeds on top. And yes, you see my cabinet door open. <laughs> Hopefully, that's soon going to stop. Well, it'll never stop because I've just got people. And I did that. I didn't close it. So, um, I think it got the barbecue bread got its name from when you grill out. It's a good bread just to lay on the grill. And um, so, yeah, I'm just going to butter it up, sprinkle some garlic powder on it, stick it in the oven, toast it up, and we're going to have garlic barbecue bread okay guys so when we were talking about the pasta water i said i just heavily salted it notice i did not say that i added any oil to it now i used to add oil and i'm always the kind of person who i need to understand the reason why behind something before i just buy into it <clears throat> so i kind of understood why people added oil because it helped them, or supposedly helped them not to stick together, the noodles. But when they started saying, don't add the oil, I needed to know the reason why. Well, let me tell you why the reason why, and it makes so much sense. Because the sauce won't stick to the noodles. It just kind of slides right off. The salt flavors the noodles, but it also roughs up the noodles. I heard this, who did I hear this on? I heard this on somewhere. Seems like it was another YouTube. But it also kind of roughs up the noodles um, for the sauce to adhere to as well. So don't add salt, I mean uh, oil, to your water anymore. Be sure to add salt though. Um, <clears throat> so that's your reason why. So if you're like me and have to understand why people, you know, I never was one of those who, when, when mom or dad would say, because I said so. I'm like, I get that, but I need, I want to understand the reasoning behind it. And mom and daddy didn't always understand that logic. <laughs> um, but anyway, okay, I'll see you guys in the dining room. Okay, y'all, there is the spaghetti sauce, the noodles, salad, and our... Barbecue bread. No this is um oh they're in there I didn't bring them and that is our little um, appetizer. <laughs> Isaac had some fancy jelly we're tasting with some cream cheese and crackers. And then for dessert, Judah, what are we having for dessert? What are we gonna eat after supper? Water. Watermelon. But right now he's into the bread. Hang on, we got to say the blessing. Thank you for joining in. We're going to bless the food, and then we're going to do a taste test. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we thank you for this food. Bless it to our bodies tonight. Thank you for our family. Thank you for Leslie working so hard to prepare a meal. Thank you for uh, a smooth hay season and a smooth placement of birds today. And may the rest of this week be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Miss Leslie's famous... Can you want some sauce, honey? Non-homemade spaghetti sauce. <laughs> Non-homemade spaghetti sauce that she doctors up. Can I have the Parmesan cheese? Yeah, let me cut it off. That's what Isaac used to say when he was little. Parmesan. Look at that. 
Are you he doesn't know it's already in the sauce. Oh, is it already in the sauce? Never have too much. Uh, Levi says, I want some. Very, I'm very good. Very, very good. We're feeling phenomenal. We're feeling Italian tonight. You're welcome. I haven't used that word lately, have I? No, you haven't. Of course, I haven't been doing your taste I, test, either. I haven't been cooking. <laughs> I haven't been cooking lately. Hey, Levi. Are you hungry? Yes. Judabug, is it good? Yep, looks like it. I believe he loves spaghetti. Hey, hey, hey. The noodles are different. No. What are you doing, Isaac? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why he's got all of his face. I'm going to take the shirt off. <laughs> Stripping him down. That's the only way to eat spaghetti for a little boy. Are these different noodles? Yes. Are they good? Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I'm ending the video now, but stay tuned. I mean, I'm saying my goodbyes. Wait a minute. Um, I'm saying my goodbyes now, but stay tuned. I'm going to show you. He started staining my cabinets, so I'm going to show you a little bit of my cabinets with some stain on them. They're just getting started, so... Um, and I'll also link the video down below that shows you my cabinets. And I forgot to say bye. So bye, y'all. And remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Love, y'all.